Born in Louisville in May of 1932, George King was not pampered by an easy life of privilege. His early years were filled with waiting tables at the Pendennis Club, testing his potential as a boxer at the Old Grace Gym, beginning a family at the age of 19, and then landing a job on the custodial staff of a local lumber company. Clearly the mark of a man determined to make his way in the world, but not the usual origins of a business giant. When he decided in 1964 to begin his own business, Mr. Clean's janitor and maintenance service, he did it without a huge bankroll backing him. But what he lacked in capital, he made up for it in attitude. George was a, was a unique person, and anybody who spent five minutes with him would, would know that this man is very serious about his business. He's very hardworking, but at the same time, he could relate to anybody. Easy to be with, uh, had a great sense of humor, but he was focused and he knew what he wanted to do. He had a plan and he stuck to this plan. He was never negative about his business. I know he worried about it from time to time, but I think he probably knew he was going to be successful. George King's plan was indeed successful, and it wasn't long before Mr. Clean's grew from a small family business run out of a garage into the largest black-owned business in the state of Kentucky. From the start, Mr. Clean's developed a reputation for quality work, continued to grow and gain wider recognition, acquiring contracts not only in Kentucky, but also in Michigan, Massachusetts, and Alabama. In 1982, the Small Business Administration selected Mr. Clean's as Small Business of the Year for the Southeast region, and after finally selling the business in 1995, George sought still more business goals to achieve. Along with several others, he invested in the Old Mill High School building, converting it into a successful office building. He also teamed with Junior Bridgman and A.J. Bossy to form a construction management firm known as KBB. No matter what his particular business venture was at any time, one thing always remained a constant with George King, his commitment to help the next generation achieve the same success he had. Charles, my business partner, and I knew that one day we wanted to start our own business, so we reached out to George King and he said that he would meet with us. He didn't do a whole lot of talking at the time, he let us do the talking, so he, he listened a lot when we first met him and just, just wanted to take it in. And uh, I, I remember one thing he did tell us, and I like to tell uh, people this, he said, guys, I don't mind helping you all. He said, you can't have any of my money and I don't want any of your money. But I do want you all to one day be able to help someone and spend some time with someone uh, that you can help in the future. We talk every day. We sit down, we have lunch together, and we would just discuss, discuss ideas of different ways to grow the business, pitfalls that we should try to avoid. And even when we did make mistakes, um, a lot of times it's because we didn't follow the advice that he had given us. He told us to, you know, all right, you know, you may want to be leery of going this route. And us being young and ambitious, we thought we knew something, and we tried it, and it ended up, he ended up being right every time. Anytime it seems like we get a little ahead of ourselves, he was always the one to reel us back in. Uh, he always told us, you know, slow growth, slow growth. You know, guys are trying to, don't try to get too big too fast and manageable growth. So things like that uh, stuck with us a whole lot. And uh, we certainly, uh, you know, really appreciated every moment we had with him. George was old school. And many young people don't realize that they have to pay their dues. What he instilled in me as a young businessman is that at the end of the day, I had a reputation I had to uphold and that if I worked hard and made sacrifices and gave back to the community, which he really believed in and helped others, that, you know, the sky was the limit. Giving back to the community truly was a passion for George King, and his involvement took many forms. He was very helpful in all of the civic activities that he was involved with. So obviously, Junior Achievement, 4-H, Scouts, the Lincoln Institute. And when you look back at it, most of his focus seemed to be toward the younger generations. His idea of leadership, he once said, was I'm really more of a mentor than a leader because what I want to do is pass on what I learned from others. And he did learn from others, and he made an effort to learn from others, and I know he passed it on. He always told us, you know, you, you don't have to get rich on every job. You know, if, if you can provide a good product, good service, and make a profit, then that's the goal. He also was that father figure for us. He always said, you know, you guys remind me of my sons. I treat you like my son. So he even gave us knowledge outside of business, just dealing with individuals and how to handle folks. Entrepreneur, civic leader, and mentor to the next generation. It is a resume anyone would be proud of. And the legacy of George King is one that won't soon be forgotten.
He was not a guy who was consumed by ego. Uh, he gave him, of himself to others with no expectation of anything in return, except that we do the right thing, work hard, and you know, make this community a better place. He touched so many lives and careers in this community, it's hard for me to even imagine his true impact. George was a facilitator and his footprint loomed very large in this community.